Hey, thank you for joining me today for our midweek Bible study. We're going to continue today with our study in the, in the book of Ephesians. Paul wrote this letter to the church in Ephesus. He had started that church on his second missionary journey. He spent many months with them, and his heart was certainly with that church. This is uh, afterwards, after he had left, he got word of how the church was doing. So he wrote this letter of instruction back to them, a letter of instruction and encouragement. We looked at the first 14 verses last week. Today we're going to start with verse 15 of chapter 1. And in this passage that we're going to read today, we're going to see how Paul's going to continue to give them hope, to show them the confidence that they should have in Jesus Christ. I would pray that we can learn from this today how we have that same hope and we should have that same confidence in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we begin with me in verse 1 of chapter 15. This is a prayer of thanksgiving that Paul offers. Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I love that Paul starts with thanksgiving. I tried to do that in my prayers in my personal life, to start with thanksgiving. If it's only one or two things that I can think of that I'm thankful for at the moment, it helps me to get in the right frame of mind as I pray to God. Paul goes on then to offer other prayers. First, he prays that they would know God more deeply. He says, I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you may grow in your knowledge of God. What a wonderful prayer that Paul offers for the Christians there in Ephesus, that they would have a deeper relationship and understanding of God. He prays very specifically that they would grow in spiritual wisdom. I am so blessed in my life that I have had prayer warriors over the years that have prayed this same prayer for me, that I would grow in my spiritual wisdom and in my knowledge of God as he has called me to the ministry. So I am very thankful for the prayer that Paul offers here for the Ephesian church. And I would pray that we would pray that for our own selves today, that we would grow in our spiritual wisdom and in our knowledge. Secondly, Paul prays for understanding of the confident hope that we should have in Jesus Christ. God gives us this confidence and hope through our salvation. In verse 18, he says, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. Look how he starts the verse. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light. The Bible always uses light as the opposite of darkness. Light shows understanding. Darkness shows confusion or not knowing the truth. In the light of Christ, we can find the understanding of God's will in our lives, and it gives us a confident hope that God is in control of our lives. In the things that we are going in through right now in our culture, in our society, and in our world, what a confidence it is for us to know as Christians that God is in control, He has us in His hands, and we have a confident hope that his plan is being worked out through Jesus Christ. That's what Paul is sharing with the Christians there in the church in Ephesus. They're going through persecution. They're going through punishment from the Roman uh, government. They're being ridiculed by the Jewish believers. They're being ridiculed by those of pagan practices. And he is telling them, you have a confident hope in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And nothing or no one can take that away from you. God is in control, and you have to keep trusting God. Can you hear Paul saying that to us today? God is in control, and we have to keep trusting in Him. He offers a third prayer in verse 19, and this prayer is for understanding of God's power that He gives the church. We have to first understand what the church is. The church is all who know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. We are the church, and God gives us 
power through Jesus Christ. Look at what he prays for in verse 19. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Think about that. The power that brought Jesus Christ back to life. The power that brought him from the grave is the same power that is available to us today. The power that comes directly from our God. The one who created us and knows everything about us and the one who loves us unconditionally. He has given us his power to operate in our lives today. It goes on to describe this to us in verse 21. Now he is far above it, talking about Jesus and what God did for him through his power. He says, now Jesus is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. When God brought Jesus Christ from the grave, he put him in complete authority over everything. He put him in authority of everything in this world and everything in heaven. Everything falls under the authority of Jesus Christ. He tells us this in verse 22. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. Think about that in what's happening in our world. Christ is the ultimate authority. It's not the United States government. It's not the government in China or Russia or anywhere else. God is in control. This virus is not in control. God is in control. And he has given all authority to Jesus Christ. So Jesus is making the calls right now. Everything is under his power and his reign. So we are God's chosen. We are God's children. And the one that is in authority over us right now and over the world is the one who saved us through his death on the cross. Christians, do you see the comfort we can find there? Do you see the confident hope that Paul prayed for us? Our confident hope is in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who not only saved us from the grave to give us eternal life again and forgave us for our sins, but has also placed, God has placed Jesus in authority over everything. And this is the one who is in control of the world now and the world to come. And we as Christians can put our confident hope in that Jesus Christ. Then he finishes this section in verse 23, and the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. We are the body of Christ. We are the church today in this world. And Christ has filled us with his power. He has filled us with his wisdom. He has filled us with the blessings that he has for us as his church. So Christians, what an opportunity we have right now. As the body of Christ in the world today, we can let Jesus be seen by others. God has given us the power through Christ. He has given us a confident hope in Christ. And through him, with, with the understanding that he has given us and the spiritual wisdom, we can tell the others about Jesus and about God's plan so that they too might come to an understanding of who Jesus is as Savior and Lord. I have been listening to the news closely lately, and everyone is looking for a solution. They're looking for a solution to the coronavirus. They're looking for a solution to the violence that's taking place in America today. They're looking for a solution to our economy. They're looking for a solution of how to get kids back in school, and on and on and on I could go. All of these things fall under Christ's authority. So guess where the answer can be found and should be found? In Jesus Christ. If we can get people to come to know Jesus, we can't get them, to, the Holy Spirit will convict them, excuse me for saying that, 
But as the Holy Spirit convicts them, as we share Christ with them, then they can have that wisdom and understanding and be able to apply God's purpose and God's plan to the world. And we will see all of these things being worked out. As long as we live, leave Christ out of the solution, then the answers are going to be hard to be found. But if we will bring Christ into the problem, bring Christ into what's happening now in America and in the world, we will see things begin to work out because we will have his spiritual wisdom, we will have his power, and we will be able to do it his way and everything will fall into place according to God's will. So as we look at our passage today, as Paul was sharing with the church in Ephesus, he was giving them a hope, a confident hope. He was giving them an understanding of the power they had through Jesus Christ. And he was showing them that they needed to remember that Christ is in control of everything that is happening. Wow, that's exactly what we need to hear today. So let's don't forget that God has given us a hope that is confident in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he has given us his power that we can do whatever he wants us to through the power of Christ. And he has given us an understanding that Jesus Christ is in control. Let's hang on to that promise. Let's hold on to the truth. And let's continue to let God work his will out in the world today. As he uses us as his church to continue to bring lost people to Jesus Christ. Would you join me as we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for our passage today in the book of the Ephesians. Thank you for allowing God to, God for you allowing Paul to receive these words to give to your church. Not only the church in Ephesus, but the church throughout the generations and the church that exists in the world today. Help us to claim the promises that are in these verses, that we have your power, we have your wisdom, and we have the confident hope that Jesus Christ is in control and everything falls under his power. So we just trust everything to you today, and we ask that you'll continue to use us, your church, to be a shining light to draw others to the truth. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.